Jim, I want to pick up on where Michelle left off to some extent, but first you've recommended national digital standards, including in relation to identification. In the last parliament, we looked very closely at the privacy committee at Estonia and the work in the EU. And it did occur to me in the course of this crisis as we're forced to live even more of our lives online, we would be, we would have been even better even so much more well placed to live our lives online had we had a digital government in place to begin with. Yes, correct. We have to, it's the plumbing structures. The government gives you physical identity and a driver's license and a passport, but they've abdicated that role essentially in the digital realm. But as we move to more online services, the government has to provide um, some form of identity, or you've let corporate actors do it, and it comes with a social media account or some kind of Airbnb rate rating. The other thing we have to do is have data sharing standards. I can assure you the folks in Treasury Board want to see these things, but it needs pressure from your committee to say to finance, this is a priority. And, and I need you to understand these are very small dollars. We were talking 10, 20, 30 million dollar antes to make us safe and strong in this digital evolution. But you don't do it if you don't understand it's important. And that goes to that whole realm of what is called digital policy infrastructure that we haven't paid attention to in 20 years. And not only improve customer service for Canadians and citizens from their governments, but also significant return in a small investment, as you say, but Estonia certainly reaps significant economic rewards overall. On, on innovation, there, it was reported in, in the Globe, the National Research Council had made an agreement with CanSino. We we're going to foot the bill to some extent, but have no IP and no guarantee of supply. And then Natalie Rafool and Jim Hinton call it innovation philanthropy. They not only point to that example, but they point to similar university networks supporting 5G research, AI research, uh, research in batteries that Tesla has managed to uh, profit from out of Dalhousie. Along the way, we are funding research and we are not reaping the benefits. Those two authors recommend an IP collective, and I think Jim Hinton is part of an, uh, building out an IP collective. This is one of your main recommendations here as well. How does that fit? How, how does that help, I guess? Is it, walk, walk me through how an IP collective would support Canadian innovation. Well, what, what happens is, is if you look at the, the U.S., um, filings for last year's patent filings, they just came out yesterday for the top 300. These companies are building enormous arsenals. You know, Facebook's filings were up 78% last year. Companies, IBM filed another 10,000 patents. We're so mismatched by 20 years of not paying attention. The only way we can rebalance that is through collective actions. And again, I draw to the story of Western Canada. It was so imbalanced to the force of the US 100 years ago, communities came together and created collective strategies. And we need the same for IP. We can talk all we want about supplying clean tech, but we own virtually no clean tech technologies. We funded them through our researchers, we funded them through our granting programs, but they've all leaked out. CanSino is another case in point. We're counting on the benevolence of a China and a Chinese company and the Chinese military for our sovereign ability to look after our health in a vaccine. That's no way, I believe, for a country to manage its security and sovereignty and health and prosperity in the 21st century. And my last question, because presumably that IP collective, the idea is to allow Canadian companies to maintain IP here in Canada and to better profit from IP here in Canada. I wonder when it comes to public investment, what that looks like for a return for the state as well. And so uh, Mariana Mazzucato wrote in The Entrepreneurial State where an applied tech breakthrough is directly financed by the government the government should in return be able to extract a royalty from its application. And I wonder what you think, not only about ensuring Canadian companies are benefiting, but where we are significantly investing state dollars, public dollars, public investment in our university networks and beyond, and companies, Canadian or otherwise, are able to profit. Should the state not have a, a direct return as well? I love the idea, and it's a lot better than making China richer with our money. I love your idea. Thanks very much.